Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. Today's video is an isobod species profile of Armadillidium peracai. Let's start by talking a little bit about this species' scientific name. Armadillidium is a pretty familiar genus, and you may already know that the word means basically little armored one, but many people aren't sure how to pronounce the word peracai and have no idea what it means. It turns out that peracca is an Italian last name, and there was an Italian herpetologist of the 19th and early 20th centuries, Mario Giacinto Peracca, after whom several reptile species were named. I can't be sure, but since Peracca is found in Italy and Greece, I find it likely that this isopod was named for him as well. And since Peracca is pronounced with a hard C sound, so is Peracca. As far as I am aware, Armadillidium Peracca is not widely distributed outside its native lands of Italy and Greece, although it's quite common in the isopod hobby these days. At first glance, it's a conglobating isopod with a slate gray color, maybe a little bit of blue to it. But if you look closer, you'll see that it has a tuberculated or bumpy surface. Many people say that this isopod species has a primordial appearance, reminiscent of trilobites. Armadillidium peracai is a medium-sized isopod. Many sources indicate that it can reach around 0.7 inches or about 1.7 centimeters. I haven't heard many common names associated with this species. It's usually referred to as Armadillidium peracai, or an abbreviated form of that name, although Josh at Isobuddies proposes we should call it the Alloy isopod, and I kind of like that. The wild type that you see here is by far the most common form available of this species, but thanks to Cassie at Bitty Bugs, I'm going to show you some Armadillidium peracai pied. I received my initial stock of peracai from Cassie at Bitty Bugs, and from Braden at Critters and More. I'll put links to both of their sites down in the description. Not long after my first peracai arrived, I noticed this very interesting specimen in my colony. I reached out to both Cassie and Braden, and Cassie at Bitty Bugs indicated that she had seen some similar individuals in her colony. She has since sent me several more individuals on two separate occasions to see if I can isolate the strain. Thanks again, Cassie at Bitty Bugs, and be sure to check out her site down in the description. We are not the first people to work with pied peracai, but they are still fairly rare in the hobby. Pied expression can vary widely in isopods, and sometimes there's more than one type of pied expression in one species, like in Porcelio scaber, where Dalmatian, piebald, and koi all have quite distinct looks to them. I really love the bold expression of the pied trait in Peracai. So far, none of the offspring exhibit this trait visually, but the hope is that many of these juveniles are heterozygous for the pied trait. If you'd like to know more about how to isolate a particular trait in isopods, I have a video on that topic right up here. Before I continue with the species profile, I'd like to thank all of my patrons at Patreon. Working with animals brings me a lot of joy, as does sharing my experiences with you. My patrons make this possible every step of the way, from helping me care for my animals to improving the equipment that I use to film for these videos. A little goes a long way. You can support Aquarimax Pets for as little as one US dollar a month, or about three cents a day. That may not sound like much, but many patrons make a difference. If you'd like to help me continue to create educational content on the creatures we all love, please click the link at the end of this video, or in the description. And now back to Armadillidium peracai and its reproduction. This species might be the most prolific armadillidium in the hobby. It appears to produce young consistently year-round, and the young seem to be hardy and to grow reasonably quickly. In terms of care, this is not a particularly demanding isopod. Like most isopods, an inch or two of base substrate, such as organic compost, with a top layer of leaf litter is suitable. Provide hides, such as bark slabs, and a moisture gradient. Good ventilation is appreciated with this species. I offer some cross ventilation. Room temperatures are fine, and if it gets a bit cooler at night with some seasonal variation, that's not an issue at all. As an armadillidium species, they eat a lot of plant-based food, but will not reject protein-based foods either. Other than the leaf litter that they should always have available, I offer supreme isopod chow as a staple, and you can use bits of vegetables, fish foods, just about anything you'll feed isopods. I can't think of any difficulties uniquely associated with this species, but uh, something that Smugbug says on the site is that uh, 
they can experience molting issues if they're in consistently damp tropical conditions, so providing a moisture gradient should prevent such issues from occurring. And if you haven't checked out the Smugbug site, you should definitely do that. There's a link down in the description. I've never used Armadillidium paracae as a biocustodian, but it would likely be a good match for many bioactive vivaria, as long as they're not consistently moist with uh, poor ventilation or excessively dry without a hydration station. Because this species is quite prolific, it could serve well in a setup in which isopod predation is likely to occur. Keep in mind, since they are an armadillidium species, they might decide to nibble on live plants. As a display isopod, this species does seem to be fairly active and it won't take long to build up good numbers, which will, of course, improve visibility as well. The unique texture and appearance is a point in their favor, and once I get good numbers of these pied individuals, I think I'll be setting them up in a display enclosure. Have you kept Armadillidium paracae? If so, let me know about your experience down in the comments. This video is part of a growing playlist of isopod species profiles, so make sure to check those out. And thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.